Jack Morrison, the American hero, Indiana born and raised. Don't know who that is? That is the ex-Overwatch commander, now commonly known as Soldier 76. The man is the pinnacle of what a good soldier should be. Determined, passionate, hardworking, and most of all willing to lose it all to help innocent people. Everybody's favourite aimbotter has a lot of cool shit on him. His, his gear may seem basic from an outside perspective, but it's not stuff you see on a regular basis. I mean, a beacon that can send out healing to people in a certain area? That's pretty advanced shit. Okay, m maybe the biotic field is a little far-fetched, but bear with me. I'm going to ask and hopefully answer a gosh darn interesting question. Is he possible? Or, more to the point, how close are we to replicating a Soldier 76 in our real world right now? As with pretty much all of these topics, it's all in perspective. We can be so close and yet so far away. And I feel like that is true with his legs. I want to dive into this first because I noticed a few people mentioned it in the comment section of a previous episode of The Tech. So his legs aren't 100% organic and sadly during an intense battle he was injured forcing him to find a replacement. He engaged in numerous operations that got him back on his feet out in the field once again, but essentially turned him into a cyborg. We've covered our fair share of prosthetics on this channel, so I'm sure by now you know there is a large number of working replacement robotic legs that work to the equivalent of a human, or in some more expensive cases, even better. But since his legs have an emphasis on the sprinting functionality, being the ability in question, I thought it would be cool to look at some fast robotic legs. This will obviously need major adjustments, but this Kaist Raptor robot is a pair of legs designed after the prehistoric legs of numerous raptor skeletons. With some structural adjustments, it could potentially support the weight of 76 and run, but at the moment it does look a little tame. To flash things up for you, would you be impressed if I told you it can reach roughly 50 kilometers per hour? That is something that could be handy if you're in a bloody rush. Bear in mind that it's just a max speed with only the legs and no extra weight, but this still means we could potentially make robotic legs for humans that can run pretty darn fast. It's kinda all hypothetical, but let's dream big. We're on the right tracks here. As for the comments concerning how Sombra could halt Soldier 76, well, her EMP would reduce this and most robotic legs to bumbling bits of material barely holding up a body. No idea how 76 would still be able to walk around normally and just not sprint while this is in effect though. I guess it's just one of the mysteries that only Blizzard know the answer to. Let's move on to one of the items people most associate with the modern soldier, a gun. Soldier 76's weapon of choice is a heavy pulse rifle that can dish out 6 to 20 damage per hit. I was considering finding a basic assault rifle that provided a similar outcome of fire rate and so on, but I came across a pretty cool fan made weapon. It's not an overwatch fan made weapon, however it is fully functional and fits the bill with Soldier 76's pulse rifle. It's pretty much a working version of the M41A pulse rifle from the Alien series, and can be fired in a similar way to Soldier's pulse rifle. The only problem with this is because it's a hybrid weapon, more of that in a second, it uses a smaller submachine gun for the rifle segment of the gun. It's a Military Armament Corporation Model 11, otherwise known as a Mac 11, which can produce a varied fire rate depending on the specific model that peak at around 1200 rounds per minute which is much faster than the fire rate of 76's pulse rifle at a measly 600 rounds per minute, but 600 can still deal a lot of damage and do the job perfectly fine. To top it all off, this weapon has an underbarrel shotgun just like in the Alien film. The creator of it has sadly said he won't be manufacturing any for selling, so don't get your hopes up about buying one for yourself. However, if we could get our hands on one, we could always swap out that shotgun for a little underbarrel grenade launcher, because we've got some badass Helix rocket boots to fill. The Helix rockets are three mini rockets that fire out at once, and when they hit, they deal 120 damage to any foe in their way. So three mini rockets simultaneously firing out in a spiraling fashion isn't exactly basic equipment, 
and sadly not priority for research and development sectors of armament suppliers. However, we do have the famously efficient, powerful and versatile Heckler & Koch M320 underbarrel grenade launcher. The M320 can fire numerous types of NATO grenades, such as high explosive, which will function as a slightly less accurate version of the Helix rocket, but would probably add more of an area effect damage to 76's arsenal. The M320 can also fire smoke grenades and illuminating grenades for tactical purposes, which you never know, could come in handy in Overwatch. One little cherry to top it all off would be the Day Night Sight, which has a laser range fighter attached to increase accuracy. So we've got a major advantage at any time of day compared to any other individual with or without a grenade launcher. You thought it couldn't get any better? Well, the actual launcher can be fired on its own and detached completely from the rifle it's supposed to be attached to. Can you imagine how badass it would look? Soldier 76 with a pulse rifle, sling fools in his right hand and grenading the fuck out folks with his left. Unrealistic, but badass as hell. As I mentioned earlier, Soldier 76 is an aimbotting scumbag, and that's why we love him, right? So his ultimate is called Tactical Visor, but it's pretty much and was inspired by an aimbot program. The player gets to lock on to any visible enemy with pretty much perfect accuracy. The ultimate currently lasts 6 seconds and also reduces the reload speed of the pulse rifle by half. So to make this possible, we need to essentially hack real life and allow us to have aids on our accuracy that can turn a novice into a crack shot. In come gun manufacturer Tracking Point, who specialise in accuracy. They've created the M800 which has their specially crafted tracking system and scope combination. It is a multifunctional semi-automatic rifle, which can be fired by your own finger like normal, which obviously has the chance to miss your target because, well, we're only human. Nobody is perfect. The second mode, however, being the tracker, is almost perfect. It's especially useful on moving targets because you simply need to aim at the target you wish to hit, press the track button and let the magic happen. When the end of the barrel perfectly matches up with your target, it will fire, flawlessly taking it down. It uses similar technology that some fighter jets use when targeting enemies and it's just sitting in your hands. Sure, the gun doesn't move around like crazy tracking the barrel to your target's head, allowing you just to pull the trigger and kill, but it comes in at a close second. And it's something that I think you'll agree is a pretty interesting advancement that could help out military forces cleanly take down targets with precision. So that is a wrap, we essentially have a real world Soldier 76, minus the sweet jacket and the biotic field. If you guys have any ideas for cool things you'd like me to cover in future episodes of The Tech, I'm taking requests because I'd love to see what you guys want. So tell me in the comment section or hit me up on Twitter at Stally's Militia. You could also give me a little follow while you're there, that's always nice. While you're feeling generous, you could always check out our Patreon page. We'd love your support in any way possible and Patreon is one of the big ways that we can expand in the right direction. Right, enough of begging for your money and follows. You want to see me play games, don't you? You don't? You liar. I'm playing Overwatch right now on Twitch. Come on in, grab a chair and sit down and chat. Head over to twitch.tv slash shoddycats right now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Check. If you did, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe if you've not done so already. My name is Andrew or Stelly111 and I'll see you later.